So John, tell me about Horrible Movie Night. I mean, where did this idea come from? Horrible Movie Night came about, uh, it was born in our living room. Uh, my wife and I had a screener of a movie called Riding the Bus with My Sister, which is a Hallmark movie starring Rosie O'Donnell and Annie McDowell. And it showed up and it just kind of a Hallmark movie. You get a lot of TV screeners if you're in the right. industry. And we just kind of set it aside. But then in the ensuing days, I had heard that morning radio uh, disc jockeys were playing clips from it and, you know, making fun of it and thinking it was very funny. So I'm like, all right, what, what the heck? So we kind of pulled it back out of the trash. Literally, was in the trash. <laughs> and invited some friends over, like, hey, you know, suppose this, this thing's supposed to be really crummy. Uh -huh. So uh, let's check it out. And we watched it. Everyone kind of threw in with comments and, and funny one-liners, and it made it a great evening. It's like, we have to do this again. So we, and that, at that point, we would just, you know, rent things, uh, you know, sight unseen just from the cover or the title alone, and, you know, started to have this monthly thing in our living room. And that went on. We did that for about two years until one of the times that we had the living room show, a friend came up and said, you know, you guys should do this in a theater. And we're like, okay. So we, uh, we found a theater in Hollywood and did the, uh, did the show there for uh, two and a half years. And it's ongoing uh, in new locales in, in Hollywood as well. What is the selection process for these horrible films? I mean, the classic one is Tommy Wiseau's The Room, but how do you guys find that nugget bad movie? It's a whole bunch of different ways we find them. We've had some really good success by people recommending titles to us. Some friends of ours are actors, and some people have been in bad movies. Uh, a voice actor friend of mine, I told him about the show, and he's like, oh, you should uh, check out a movie that I was in called Project Vampire. And it was from 1985, and about a doctor who created a serum, which was supposed to be a long life serum, but actually he had a secret agenda of turning the entire world into vampires, which he would control. So we checked it out. And it was really great. And all of our movies, to fully answer the question, we have to watch all of them beforehand to see if right. they're good, bad. Because and do you test them in front of this living room audience, or do you just watch them on your own? We just watch them on our own, okay. which sometimes can be a little painful. Because <laughs> we'll have, there's movies that are bad, bad. There's movies that are boring, bad. There's movies that are kind of cult bad, trying too hard to be bad. So it's a really narrow window. You have to be an earnest film, uh, and you have to really take yourself seriously, not try to be cult. Uh, anything you're trying to do has to be done poorly, whether it's comedy or it's horror. If it's done, if you try to do it right and you do it badly, then you're on the, on the right path. Yeah, I noticed that because even Tommy Wiseau, like he, he claimed afterwards that um, no, he meant for it to be as bad as it was, but meanwhile, he earnestly was making that film, and that's yep. what made it so funny. He wanted it to be a big hit, and he fully expected it to be. And, and it, it was a big hit, but not in the way that he expected yes. it to be. So, um, I heard at the shows the audience gets involved. It's true. We, we took the living room vibe and we brought it to the theater. Mm -hmm. So, unlike most bad movie shows, or even regular movie shows, we encourage the audience to yell things out and make comments and do one-liners. And the best uh, one-liners of the evening, my wife Susan and I will judge uh, all of the funny things that people say, get prizes. So the top three uh, quotes, one-liners, that usually kind of make the audience laugh, get a prize. What kind of prizes? We, it varies. Uh, it depends if we have actors, uh, cast and crew, we have usually give away a signed poster. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we give away kind of a gag gift. We had uh, we did a film called Adventures, The Adventures of Ragtime, about a Shetland pony that foils uh, like a team a team of robbers played by Shelley Long and Jay Thomas. So as a gag gift, we gave out oat cookies. Wow. <laughs> so it just kind of depends on what the movie is. Usually we try to give away the signed poster because that's kind of a near and dear thing. And, most people like to collect autographs and like, ooh, Harrison Ford signed my Raiders of the Lost Ark poster, or this person signed this. But if you have a poster of a really bad movie signed by the really bad actors, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a keepsake. So sometimes the stars are there and you guys do Q&As? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, we've been lucky enough. For Project Vampire, which I mentioned earlier, 
we reunited almost the entire cast and most of them had not seen each other in 25 years. Wow. And it was really great. They all shared great stories from the set, uh, talked about how the director did their work and uh, odd you know, trivia. One of the characters, there's a scene where she's in her jail cell and two other characters come in and start talking. And she told us later that she was asleep during that scene and because they had to get the schedule going like this, she was taking a nap in the set and they didn't have time to wake her or put her in makeup or anything. Let's just go, let's just film and just hopefully she won't wake up. <laughs> and no one would have been the wiser. All right. There's also a scene at the end where, where she has a gun. She'd never had a gun for the entire movie. And just before that scene, the director handed her a gun and said, okay, here, now you have this. Point and shoot. Well, where was it? Like, I don't know, in your purse or something. And then it was, she didn't know if it was loaded. She didn't know how to use it. She didn't know who to point it at. And so you hear some great stories from, from behind the set. When we, get, when we get the actors on. And the great thing is that even though our audience tears the movie apart, and of course we, we participate as well, my wife and I, <laughs> they're always very, very excited to have the actors there. And people mm. come up and pose for photographs and they're very appreciative. And uh, if the actors, you know, kind of realize that they've been in a bad movie, they really get into it as well. Any crazy highlights? I mean, because everyone's nice and lubed up from the alcohol that you're serving. <laughs> Anything absolutely wild happen? Once we had this movie called Kiss Daddy Goodbye, about two telekinetic kids, twins, who try to avenge their father's death at the hands of a biker gang using their telekinetic powers to take revenge. Uh -huh. And we got that movie because the director of the movie emailed us. He heard about our show and said, hey, I think this is a movie you guys might like. And we checked it out and yeah, it was great. This is really neat. And so I made sure to email him over and over, like, now you know what we do at the show. You've read the description. Uh -huh. You know what we do in the movies. Oh, yeah, 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 it's fine. Just made absolutely double, triple sure. Uh -huh. and so he showed up, and the movie was from the late 70s. I think it was like 79 or 80 that he made the movie. So he came, he brought his writer, uh, both of them brought their wives, and they were probably in their 70s. Uh -huh. And I told them, once again, I'm like, oh boy, I really hope that they know what they're in for. Uh, so, of course, our audience just savaged the movie. And with, you know, the children, the children in the, in the movie were actually were his real children. Oh, wow, okay. So, people, there was every kind of possible joke was just thrown out there because there's real no safe, there's no safe zones on, on horrible People movie. are lubed up because you serve alcohol as yep, well. So, everyone's true. like in everyone's the mood. Everyone's really going. Yeah. So I kept kind of looking over at the at, at him and, and uh, making sure, like I think I even went up during the movie. He's like, "This is this is good. Are you okay? Is yeah. this good?" He's like, "Oh yeah, this is fine. It's fine." Um, but invariably, when he when he was on the stage later, he kind of oh yeah, well you know, kind of defended the movie a little bit, like oh we only had this much money to deal with and we only rented one camera this one day. That's why like this one camera shot. So our audience felt a little bad later, like oh god, we felt bad. You know, those were his kids. And mm -hmm. But he did say, he did, you know, he did tell, and I assured everyone, like, yeah, this is really great. You know, he'd been around Hollywood a long time, seen and heard a lot of things, so he had a good time. The only other time that there was something wild is uh, we had Jay Thomas, the radio host and actor, come for the uh, Adventures of Ragtime, the Shetland Pony thing I was talking about. And he told some uh, gribbled stories of uh, his, his co-stars, which he asked us later, uh, we were recorded, and he asked us not to... Uh, put that on the internet, which we complied with. And then there's improv as well, which you do in the middle of the show and then at the end of the show with the omelets. We do, the omelets. The omelets yeah. are a fantastic improv troupe here in L.A. And what we do is we stop the movie cold right halfway through and they and up go the lights, on go the omelets, and they take suggestions from people based on things that have happened in the movie uh, to do scenes on. And then uh, once they're done with that, we continue the movie. Mm -hmm. And in the credit sequence, the the lights go up and the uh, omelets go up again, and they improv what the casting uh, would have been like for the movie. Hmm. That's and very it's cool. uh, also quite fun. So for all of us who are local, how can we get tickets and where do we find out more about this? Uh, you can go to HorribleMovieNight.com, where of course we're on uh, Facebook and Twitter, at Horrible Movie and uh, Horrible Movie Night at Facebook. Mm -hmm. For our April show, we're at Nerd Melt Comics, which is the Nerdist Theater, which um, Meltdown Comics and the, the Nerdist Podcast created a theater to do really great uh, kind of alternative comedy. It's one of the best places to see alternative comedy in L.A. 
We were doing their April show, April 14th. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a link. If you go to nerdmeltla.com, you can get the uh, and look at the calendar. You'll find us there for April 14th. You can also go through the link on HarvardMovieNight.com. And uh, but you can also show up the night of the show at uh, at Nerdmelt. But the 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 uh, prices are a little cheaper if you buy in advance. Cool. And what film can we look forward to yelling at? In April, we are showing a movie from 1987 called Alien Private Eye. Uh huh. Alien Private Eye. If you could imagine, say, the Maltese Falcon meets Captain EO, okay, you'd probably be halfway there if you wanted to go there. <laughs> uh, it's the story of a guy named Lemro from the planet Styx, and he has come to Earth ostensibly for a vacation, but he's also set up shop as a private eye. And the only thing, of course, that makes Such him an alien, pointed ears, which he hides under kind of a Corey Feldman-esque uh, Michael Jackson era hat. So is there, are they sort of like Vulcan ears? They are. Right. So, you know, the, in the scenes so where they... So meet Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. So they were really thinking hard when they uh, came up with the uh, right. alien. <laughs> and uh, so he meets an Earth girl who is inexplicably being chased by these, by these guys um, who are trying to kill her. He eventually finds out that she is in the possession of this disc that has the information uh, from these bad guys from his home world who are somehow here. A lot of this isn't explained, why she has it, why they're after her, why he's on Earth, why she's on, why, why they're on Earth. And uh, so basically he has to save his Earth girlfriend, recover this disc, keep Earth from being destroyed, keep his home world from being destroyed and keep his hat from flying off so they don't have extra scenes of him with his ears. Gotcha. And uh, it's, it's, we fell for this movie when five minutes. There's some movies that we watch kind of like all the way through, but this one, absolute knockout, tons of fun. So what drew you in right away? Uh, there's, once again, that earnestness, but the elite actor is really great. It's a guy named Nicky Fastinetti, who used to be a Chippendales dancer. And it sounds sort of like a porno name. <laughs> yeah. He, I think he probably would have had a, uh, been better served in his career if he went into porn. Right. <laughs> he studied did Alien Private Eye. Right. And not really suited for a lot of dialogue, this guy. It's the only movie he ever made. I have ha found zero information on him otherwise. He has a stage name, Nicky Hill. Uh, he's been in no movies other in, in, with either of those names. He doesn't have a website. He doesn't have any kind of presence. Uh, if we could get him, of course, for the show, it would be amazing. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it is. Is Maybe he did go back to Sticks. Yeah. Quite possibly. Maybe he was indeed an alien, and they were on to, uh, they were on to him and decided to put him in a, in a picture. Yes, the government got a hold of him and went, oh, those years are not human. That's right. Ouch. It's either community theater or off our planet, buddy. Yeah. So for future reference, not in terms of horrible movie night, um, have you got anything else that you want to promote or talk about? Uh, well, my day job, um, where a lot of this uh, comes from, is I work on um, as a writer artist on Phineas and Ferb for the mm -hmm. Disney Channel, which is a popular kids show, and uh, kind of get to you know do my writing chops there. A side writing project I do is a Star Wars parody Twitter feed called Ordinary Star Wars. You go to at Ordinary SW, it's uh, the, the original Star Wars trilogy as told by background characters, say that random stormtrooper or that guy from Moss Eisley. Uh, so it's just kind of a something a fun fun side project to do. And, you know, aside from Horrible Movie Night, that's all I got time for. So how often do you do Horrible Movie Night? Is it once? You're doing it once a month at home, but how often do you do the shows? And we try to do the shows uh, monthly as well. Okay. We were previously at a theater, and we decided to take a break from being at that theater. And now we're trying to, uh, the Nerd Melt thing is a kind of a one-off show they're giving us. So, and if it goes well, uh, we'll hopefully be a monthly thing. So get your tickets now so we can be a monthly thing. Uh, and then we're going to see if we can, um, if they don't do us monthly, we're going to see if there's some other venues uh, in town. So we're kind of going to bounce around, but we're going to try to keep it a monthly show at the very least. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, thank you so much for coming in, John. Thank you, Kim.